Easter, so okay. I've got that. Okay, we might start then. <laughs> hello, Carol hello. and Jenny. Before yeah, we hello, do. Carol and Jenny. Okay, it's eleven oh one, so we might start. Um, today we're looking at discovering your family history through newspapers and looking at Trove as well. So I'm Heather Arnold. And as I've said before to you, I was local history librarian here at Case Kidney Libraries. But at the moment, I'm just a retired lady and president of the Cure of Swamp Historical Society. But I love Trove. It's one of the best things. I just, just love Trove. So um, we're going to start the PowerPoint presentation. And then we're going to go to the internet. Then we're coming back to PowerPoint. So we'll just see how that goes technology-wise. But, you know, share my screen. And we'll start with here. Share. Right, start from the start. Oh, that wasn't very organised. Should have been right at the start from there. Um, right, so that's my <coughs> first screen. So there is a handout which Michelle will email to you and the handout are all my notes. So uh, the handout is the PowerPoint presentation. So all the um, URLs, etc., are on the hand handout. So we're gonna look mainly at Trove today, but and Trove is a National Library of Australia um, pro, uh, project and it's a wonderful source of family history information because it has digitised newspapers and of course digitised newspapers or all, all newspapers of course have births, deaths and marriage information and other local and other family history and local history information but not all newspapers are digitised and not all digitised newspapers are on Trove. So <clears throat> local history societies are a great source of newspapers. So at the Curiop Swamp Historical Society, we've digitised the Curiop Sun up to 1981, and most of that is not on trove. Um, the Danong District Historical Society has, I believe, an entire set of um, hard copy Danong journals, most of which, of course, are not on trove as well. And you can access information about historical societies on the Royal Historical Society of Victoria website which I'll show you in a minute, but if I, I don't want to flick back between screens because, you know, it's a bit nerve wracking. So local historical societies are a good source of newspapers. Oh. Well, and also um, we've looked at this before, Papers Past, which is the New Zealand trove. And that is, uh, they cover lots of papers in New Zealand. And other, and other New Zealand information as well. And of course, New Zealand papers like Victorian and Australian papers also have lots of information about families, including the, the, the regular birth, deaths and marriage information, as well as and reports about what people have been doing and shipping records and all those sorts of things. Uh, the State Library of Victoria subscribes to newspaper databases, which you can access freely with a State Library card. So you just, we'll go show you how to go into it in a minute. Um, so they have examples. So examples of their online newspapers are the New York Times from 1851 to 2017. They have a database called News, which is Gail, who's the um, publisher, uh, which includes newspapers from all around the world with various state ranges. They have the Boston Globe. This is just random examples of newspapers, 1872 to 1989. The British newspaper, British Library newspapers, at 1732 to 1950 and other archives as well. And the State Library of Victoria also has hundreds and hundreds of original newspapers uh, which have been sent to them under the legal deposit scheme. And some are in hard copy, so you can only access them through the library. And some of them are microfilm, which once again, you can only access through the library, but um, you can access them if you, if you wanna go into the State Library. So it's worth checking their catalog and it's worth ringing them before you go to make sure that the actual copy of the newspaper you want is in the library, because a lot of them are stored off site and it's a two or three day turnaround to actually get the items back into the library. So the State Library of Victoria is, as I said, a wonderful source for local newspapers, Victorian newspapers. Your local library, that's us, Case Kidinia Libraries. We also uh, have newspapers. So we've subscribed to The Age online. So you get today's copy plus an archive of 13 years. So if you think there was a death notice or a birth notice in the, um, not so much birth notice these days, people don't put them in papers. Uh, if you think there was a notice or information about your family uh, from more recent times, well, you can look through our library uh, website and you can go to The Age, Sydney Morning Herald's the same. And we also have Press Reader, which has over, uh, which we subscribe to over 7,000 newspapers in 60 different languages and all with various different date ranges. And all you need is your library card. So, which of course is free to get. 
other sources of newspapers are um, Ancestry and Find My Past also have newspaper archives. And of course, lots of, lots of newspapers have their own archives for subscribers, such as the Australian Financial Review and all those sorts of papers. Now we're just going to go to, I'm going to stop sharing, go to then share again. I'll go to here. Right. So I'll just take you through, you should be able to see this uh, Royal Historical Society of Victoria um, website now. So just what I've just spoken about recently. So if you want to know what uh, where your local historical society is, go to the Royal Historical Society of Victoria website and go to search societies and then you can put the society in that you're interested in and then you can give them a call to see what newspapers they have. Then we talked about papers past. So this is a New Zealand papers past, which um, as I said, it's like, it's like Trove. It's not, it's a bit different, but it's just quite as good as Trove. So you just put a name in, do a search. You can search as like you can with Trove by title, or in this case by region or by year. So you can filter your, your results back that way. But you know, if you had an ancestor that went to New Zealand, just put the name in or put the name, their name in and the name of the town and just see what results that you get. Because, you know, newspapers, local newspapers in those days had lots and lots of local information and lots of family information including shipping records, because I'll tell you, I saw one the other day of some of someone I was interested in who um, who said that she bought the ship at Greymouth to go back to Melbourne. So, I mean, you get like those sort of reports as well. So you might find, you know, when they actually went from, um, if they went from New Zealand to Victoria, the actual date they went and the ship they went on, they, they arrived on. So this is the Sat Library of Victoria. So to find the newspapers, you go to search and discover A to Z databases. And then just scroll through there. So if you look under B for, B for British newspapers, oh, there's the Boston Globe, there's um, British Library newspapers, British Newspaper Archive. Um, you can also search by subject, which would be newspapers. So just um, put in, just randomly scroll through it if you don't know what you want. So Tasmanian newspapers here. No, that's something I didn't know until then. So um, Tasmanian newspapers, The Age, The Sydney Morning Herald, those sorts of things. So they've got lots and lots and lots of newspapers online. And all you need is a library card. So it says here on the right here, how to become a library member. You just register, it's free. And then they send you your library card number. You don't get a physical card anymore and how to log on to it. So it's a free thing. So it's really worth having a, a State Library Victoria library card because they have a wealth of um, databases that you can access on all different subjects. And there's us, Case Kidinia Libraries. And so to um, access our library newspapers, go to online resources, go to read and you'll get the age online um, and we'll scroll down to press reader press reader is the coolest thing press reader is so good so you can access as so a press reader you can search by language search by newspaper so if you're looking for um, a French newspaper Oh, that's in French. No, hang on. <laughs> search. How about we do the right thing? Oh, now search it in French. Okay. We'll, see. we'll go back to English. I oh, know. What the heck? Let's pretend we're French. So we can... Uh, English. We'll go back to English. <laughs> search your website. Search your catalog. So oh, I've lost it again. Oh, gosh. Um, anyway, you get the picture. So so you get press reader through here. And I've got myself in a loop and I can't get out of it. So go to Press Reader and that's where you'll find all the um, newspapers and magazines from around the world. So if you um, if you just want to keep read up the, the current newspapers from whatever country you're interested in, well, the Press Reader is the place to go. Uh, once again, you just need a library card and you can get a library card through us, go to any branch or else you can do it online. So there's lots and lots of um, newspapers out there, apart from Trove, that are already dig digitised or can be accessed. Now we'll go back to my next, I'll share a screen, I'll go back to here. Oh, slideshow. Sure. 
Right. So what is Trove? As I said before, Trove is the National Library of Australia project that brings together all resources about Australia. And with one search, you can look for newspaper articles, photographs, maps, archive websites, books, and more. It is just the most wonderful thing. I've said this before. And what can you find? So it's, there's 10 different categories of, um, of information at Trove. So newspapers and gazettes, magazines and newsletters, images, research reports, research and reports, books and libraries. So books and libraries is where if you want to get an interlibrary loan through us, you can actually you go to Trove now, find it, you can find out where any book is held in, um, in Australia, and then you can actually put an interlibrary loan requesting through us if you want to get a book, a certain book, diaries and letters, music and audio and video, people and organisations, websites and lists. So they're the sort of the main categories that they have. And we'll look through all of them later on. The main thing I use all the time are newspapers and also the images plus lists. I make a lot of lists and we'll tell you about that later. So this is Trove. And now before we go to Trove, that's what the interface looks like. Just a few things about searching. So Trove uses Boolean operators. I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but really I don't. So, so if you want to find out about um, South Australia and elections, you'd put in South Australia and elections. So, um, so like it works out. So if you want to find out um, about um, Coraline and football, put the example in this Coraline, then and in um, capitals and football. And then you'll find out all articles that have a, have a that are connected to Coraline and football. Or if you want to use a uh, search a phrase, that's where you put it into talk marks, speak, speaking marks like that. So Morton Bay brings up Morton Bay rather than, so, now, so then Trove looks for the phrase Morton Bay rather than looking through for Morton and the word Bay. So you get a better hit rate. You can also use an asterisk as a wild card um, and you can use upper or lower case. It doesn't make any difference. So um, as I just said, so like, like Google, if you put your, put your, um, your search term into um, your, your phrase, into speech marks, you get a much better result. So Coraline or um, Cure up, that's the way you'd search for those things. Now, you can also use the tilde, and I've said this before that uh, and in other talks, that if you learn nothing today, then using this tilde is just a game changer when it comes to searching. So, um, so if you put the name of what you want, uh, like here, you can see the example, Carlo Catani. So we're putting Carlo Catani in speech marks, then use the tilde, which is the top left hand on your keyboard and then put three. So what you want are the words Carlo and Catani within three words of each other. And um, so that would mean that would pick up um, Carlo, his middle, whatever his middle name is, I should know what I don't, let's call it Frank. That would pick up Carlo Frank Catani, or it'd pick up, um, if he's got three middle names, it'll pick all those up. So it just, it just gives you a, um, a more accurate search. Um, but if you're looking for, say, the death notice of a woman, so here's Kate Katani, this example I've used here. I'd use tilde in the word and then the number 10. So you put the word Kate and you're looking for the word Kate and the word Katani within 10 words of each other. Because often death notices for women are written like this. Katani, on August 6, 1925, beloved wife of Carlo, Kate passed away. Or I might say um, Katani, then it has, you know, relic of the late Carlo Katani, Catherine, or whatever her name is, you know. So, so often you find that for for death notices for women, that um, there's a whole lot of stuff in between her, her last name and her first name, if you get what I mean. So this is why I always suggest if you're looking for the death notice of a woman, put the name in, in um, inverted commas and you, a children and then say 10, so you want 10 words in between Kate and Katani, and you're going to get more chance of actually um, finding the result than if you would otherwise. That would be my advice to you. So just using the children, just catch down your, your wrong results. And, and sometimes you find if I put a search term in, so I'd put in, say, you know, Melbourne and um, politics or something. Like um, sometimes you, um, if, if you don't get a result, so if you decide you only want the words within, say, two or three words of each other and you get you don't get any results well just change the number here to say 15 or something like that and then you get 
words that are still in close proximity to each other in the article, but um, but not sort of, so it just sort of broadens your results a bit. So we'll show you an example of this in a minute when I do some searching online. Now, we're going back to Trove now. I'll close this, close this, close this, close this. Right, so now we're back to Trove. So this is the search screen you get and you can search in many ways. So you can search or I, as I told you before, I just put in a search term, we'll put in Carlo Catani and hit enter. So I'll put in Carlo Catani and I get 339 results. So you can see across the top here, all the different categories I spoke about before, newspapers, magazines, images, research reports, books, etc. So if you really want a, um, a newspaper article, you just click on that at the top there, or if you want an image, click on the image. So we'll just click on the image to start off with. And here's various photos connected to Carlo Catani that you get through that, or in this case, Lake Catani, but that's all right. We'll go back to newspapers. We go to newspapers and then uh, once you're into newspapers or, or any other category, you can refine your results. So if you really want this Victorian newspapers, click on Victoria and you just get Victorian newspapers. If you just want, then it gives you categories of, of um, articles. So you can want, if you want an article or you might want advertising, a family notice or a detailed list. So a detailed list is like a, a list of um, sporting results or a list of election results or something like that. I mean, normally what you want is an article, but if you, if you want advertising, if you're looking for the, say, the business that your grandfather used to run in Collins Street, well, then you might just decide to look for the advertising category. And you can also um, filter by uh, date range here as well. So if you want articles from... so. So uh, because I know that Carlo Catani um, died in 1918, if I only want articles on him, I would restrict my date range to something before 1918. But you can make that decision, whatever you want. So if you're looking for a birth notice in the 1950s, well, then just click on 1950 here and restrict your results to that. Then you can ask for a, an article which has a photo or an illustration or a map, and you can uh, filter by um, word count as well. You can also change your results to have um, so that the earliest result first or the latest result first as well. So this is how you just do a general search. You go, just put the name in there. But you can also search in specific categories. So if you're if what you really want are, um, are just photographs, well, just put in images. And then we'll search for, we'll search for Danny Nong. So we want images from Danny Nong. And what you get are a whole lot of images with the word Danny Nong in the title. So in this case, that's the ship called the Danny Nong. Uh, that's from Flickr. That's the Maritime Museum, once again, the ship. Um, so Trove um, has its own collection of photographs and it, so it has own collection of photographs and also harvest photographs. So it's, um, it's any photograph of the State Library of Victoria that comes up in the Trove search or um, the National Archives or other, those other places, they all come up in Trove searches. So that's one of the good things about doing search on Trove. You do access article, uh, photographs of other um, organisations. Um, We'll just find something really good. It's not available online. Okay. Well, this one here, that's a map of Victoria of um, Danny Nong, and it's directed you from to the Saint Library Victoria website. So it just tells you where you can actually um, access the photos. So, um, so this is why. Uh, so you got we got there by back to our general search by searching for the category that we're interested in. But you can also um, do another search 
through advanced search, which is here. So click on advanced search. And then if you look at say the newspapers, so to search the so the advantage of doing the advantage of doing an advanced search for newspapers is that you can then limit your um, you have a better date range. So I think with um, so the normal date ranges in Trove are in decades, but if you're actually looking for photos or information from 1885 to 1895, well this is where you do an advanced search. So you can actually put in that you want all your articles from. Um, 01, 01, 1895 to, oh, what's that? Oh, golly. Um, we'll just do it. <laughs> um, yeah, 1890. Okay. So here we're looking for, oh, it's just a year, but never mind, just for a year range. And then you can decide you want these words, Carla Gattani. Uh, and then you could decide that you, or oh, actually the phrase, I'm going to do that properly. And then you can decide you didn't, if you didn't want anything about St Kilda, you could say, I don't want anything about St Kilda. For instance, you can then decide what newspapers you wanted to search through. And if we could just put in a, we'll just say we want this one. So it just, so doing an advanced search means that you can limit your date period and you can also search specifically for one newspaper. So that's one of the advantages of doing an advanced search. But uh, you might be surprised to know that I don't bother with those. I just go straight to the newspapers and search there. And then I filter my results because that's why I like to search because, you know, you may, you, you don't want to miss out on anything. And if you get too prescriptive in how you search, sometimes you just miss out on things because they're just outside your date range or because uh, you're, they're, they're just, there's various other reasons or because you have the information wrong from the start. Or there's, you know, there's various reasons. So I just feel you may as well just, quite frankly, do a search, a um, general search first and then filter your results down. So there's lots of things when you're searching for family history that you can find on Trove. And I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint presentation. And start share. Oh, golly. So it's been a bit of a risk it is going from one thing to another. So this is what you can find on Trove. Lots and lots of information. So birth, deaths and marriage information, of course, or engagement announcements, of course, if your family put the notices in. And I tell you, more families put notices in the papers in the olden days than they do now. But nowadays we put it all on Facebook and things like that. But you may find mention of family members and reports of, say, wills and probate, inquests and obituaries, weddings and divorces. They used to report all the divorce cases in those days. They were, there's a special divorce court at the Supreme Court and then the public were allowed to attend, the press were allowed to attend. So all the gory details of someone's marriage or someone's divorce comes out in these press reports. Accidents, hotel license hearings, school teacher appointments, public service appointments. Uh, they do reports in the Government Gazette. So they would report. So every the Government Gazette came out weekly and every newspaper I know would search through the Government Gazette when it came out and find any local information. So the Lionville Gazette, if there was such a thing, would report that Horatio Weatherhead from Lionville was granted a patent or that he was granted the, uh, he was a trustee of the local hall. So there's lots of information about your family from Government Gazettes, which has been uh, republished in newspapers. You get uh, school concert reports, school speech day reports, mother club reports, Reports on community groups, uh, reports on Masonic Lodges, where they belong to the Masonic Lodge. You often find that out through the funeral notice, church reports and shipping lists. There's just so much information and we'll look at some of the examples here. So this is, of course, a uh, engagement note, uh, the birth of um, Kalakatani's daughter here, this one here, and this is the 
his death here. So that's just a typical uh, birth announcement or a typical death announcement. So there's thousands and thousands of them online. Uh, this is another, another interesting report I came across about um, Mrs. Butters and Mrs. Phillips from Camperdown who have both given birth to triplets. So while it's quite unusual to have give, been given birth to triplets, but I can understand why in 1902 the age reported this as an as, as a article of note because, um, you know, it'd be quite unusual to have triplets born in the area. So I don't know either of these two ladies, Mrs Butters or Mrs Phillips, but the point is that if they were your uh, ancestors or, or some of your relatives, that's a great bit of family information to put into your family tree. Uh, so this is weddings and divorces, as I said. So this is the um, report about it uh, from the age in 1939. Cranbourne bride Sylvia Joyce Owen, and she married Mr. Leonard, Leonard Henry Leonard Campbell of Five Ways. So this is a report about who the bridesmaids were, what they wore, and those sorts of things. Sometimes the um, newspapers' reports of weddings actually told you not only who, what the bride wore, what the mother-in-law wore, the mother wore, what they did afterwards, what her going away outfit was, what presents were received, um, who was on the guest list. There's often a lot, a lot of detail of reports, especially in country newspapers, of, of local weddings. And here's the report here of a divorce when... Um, Chris George Judd of Cranbourne, he was going to divorce on the grounds of desertion on the, from his wife on the grounds of her desertion and misconduct um, with Ormond Albert Fielder. So a misconduct means, of course, having an affair. So the wife had an affair. She deserted him and he filed for divorce. So it tells you also that they, when they were married, May the 9th, 1921, and there were three small children. So, you know, that's sort of interesting apart from We'll just gloss over the lack of privacy issue here. But um, there is interesting other information because it often tells you when they're married and how many children there are. So that's sort of interesting information. And, of course, for, for poor Ormond Fielder, who apparently was the one having the affair with um, Victoria Pauline Judd, he gets his name splashed across the papers as well. So that was when divorce wasn't no fault and we wanted to find a culprit. Makes for interesting reading, but as I said, yeah, a bit of a like a privacy issue. Uh, this is a report about Carla Gattani's will. So um, tells you he left a personal real estate value at 1,400 pounds and personal property at 2,245 pounds. So they often reported wills and probate. Once again, they, they were like public, they are public documents. And so that newspapers would go through and report the contents of many wills. Often they'd say, you know, that they were left to uh, bequest to such and such an organisation and uh, the will was left to found the widow and family members or something like that. So you do get some idea of what was contained in a will without having to go to the Public Records Office of Victoria to uh, actually um, find the will. Oh, this is an inquest here. So lots of inquests as well in, um, oh, in, in complete gory detail. So this poor man here, he was run over in the goods by a goods train um, and at one point a boot was picked up with a foot in it severed at the ankle and further on a hand and portion of a forearm and other portions of the body were picked up. So uh, lots of incredibly uh, gory details on that and which you wouldn't get in papers these days, they wouldn't report an inquest but um, so I mean um, I'm not at all making light of this. It's very tragic for Mr. Tobin, but it is interesting because it tells you how they thought at the time, and then you, you. And so, if he was one of your um, relatives, it's interesting to know perhaps how he passed away. And then there's other information about Mr. Thompson, the line repairer, Constable Ryan, who was a witness, and then the inquest, the remains of the body in the inquest was at the Iona Hotel at Garfield. So there's lots of local and family information that you can find in inquests which were reported in, as you can see here, great detail in the um, olden days. This is another um, report, which is a bit sad. This is actually my great auntie, because she was found drowned in the Yarra in, um, in August 1919. So this is a report of the fact that she was found. Um, that's Emily Rouse, 25 years of age, a single woman who had been employed as a domestic servant by, and, um, 
she was employed in the Wattle Street at a house in Wattle Road in Hawthorne. And the last person to see her was the son of the household. And we, and she was pregnant. She was three months pregnant, which doesn't say here, but she was three months pregnant when she was found. And we suspect that, well, I suspect with no evidence whatsoever that the um, father of the child was the son who lived in the house, well, the son of the household, but I don't know. And he was the last one to see her alive. So it's a very sad, it was you know, sad for the family. But this is an, an example of family information you can find. Um, now, licensing reports. So if you had any ancestors who were um, publicans, well, then the uh, licensing, they had to reply, apply for their license every year. So it tells you usually you'd find out when the um, hotel license was granted in initially or when they transferred to someone else or every year it comes up that they apply for the renewal, as you can see here, was granted. So this is um, Henry Wilson, the Gibson Hotel Bunyip. Sarah Wright, she was the Hallam's Hotel at um, Hallam. Edwin Drew had the Iona Hotel at Garfield. You can see all these examples here. So there's many, many examples of um, hotels listed in the licensing report. So if you knew your ancestor had a hotel in Werribee or Mildura or somewhere, just put in licensing court, their name or the name of the hotel and the name of the place in Trobe as a search and you're bound to find something about um, when they had the license and when it was when or where it was transferred to. Or if it was not granted, that's the other thing. Sometimes it would tell you why it was not granted. So there'd be some evidence about how they run the hotel and why the police thought the license shouldn't be granted. So, so this is an example of what they're calling um, ancestry of a detailed list. And that's why, um, so rather than an article, they've called it a detailed list because it is indeed a detailed list. So, but lots of family information there if you had any publicans in the family. Um, you sometimes find uh, public service appointments. So you might find here that Leslie George Mousy Mills was, <laughs> that's an interesting name. He was um, in the, uh, he was a telephone attendant at Melbourne uh, in the customs office, Archibald Miller Allen, inspector of liquor. He was in the um, customs office. So you might find your ancestor listed here if they were in the Victorian public service because they were transferred, promoted or else initially appointed. And once again, you can't imagine this happening these days that all these sort of appointments would be in uh, published in newspapers, but they were. And this is always interesting uh, for women who are uh, nurses. They, um, the Royal Victorian Trained Nurses Association, they, I think it was around, nine, around this time, 1909 or a bit before that, they actually introduced in Victoria a central examination system. So all nurses from all hospitals had to undertake the same exams. And then if they were successful, they were reported on in the paper. And so that's a really great thing to find out if you had, a, had an ancestor who was a nurse that, you know, when she actually qualifies. So you might find that, um, so these women had already been working for years and years and years in a hospital and perhaps had done um, their training like they've done their training in-house in hospitals. But once this new um, centralised system of nursing examinations came in, you find that a lot of the women actually undertook these examinations because it gave them formal qualifications and, and they all knew they're at the same standard. So now he tells you their name, which is unusual for women because women are often listed, as you would know, under their husband's name, you know, Mrs G Smith, you know, not their own name, or else um, you often don't find their first name. But this tells you that all these women from all the hospitals Bansal, Austin, Geelong, Kyneton, Gippsland, etc., Hamilton Hospital, they all took the same examination and then the results were reported on the paper. And if I had an ancestor who was a nurse or a relative who was a nurse, I think that was really nice to find out when they, they uh, formally qualified. So, and so also if you're interested in looking at um, World War I Army nurses, you can often find, um, you know, find out when they qualified as well. So just add a bit of background to the story of their life. Uh, this is school information. So most of the um, information about speech nights came from the private schools. They didn't really come from, well, there were so few government high schools. There would have been Melbourne High School, of course, for the boys, but there were um, very few in, in the early days government high schools around that went to year 12. And it could be a lot of the private schools did, but the private school uh, speech nights were often reported in the newspapers. So 
you know, you can see here, Paula Wilkinson, Joy Kennett, Alison House, etc. They all got prizes at Fairlight Grammar School, which is in um, St Kilda. Um, and so it's just an interesting part of, um, an interesting, it's just interesting to add a bit of background to your uh, family tree or add a bit more colour to your family tree to say that, oh, well, I know that my um, my ancestor, um, Trudy White, she got a prize for junior dancing. Well, I don't know. I think that's sort of sweet. So, and also tells you the principal, Mrs. Rintel, and uh, who the uh, people who distributed the prizes were. Or you might find that indeed your in, that your ancestor actually donated a prize. In this case, the sports prizes were um, drawn by Mr. Guthrie, who may well have donated the prize as well. So you can glean a lot of information from these school reports if you know what school they went to. So once again, I would just search uh, the name of the student that you want and maybe just put um, school report or something like that and you sometimes, or, or, or um, speech night or something and you sometimes you just hit pay dirt and you find a, uh, a connection between, you, you find an article that lists your relative and the school they went to. Community group. So this is an article here about the Lang Lang Red Cross from the Dandong Journal in 1942. I told you the office bearers. So Mrs. Wilson, Miss Greaves, Miss Misson, Mr. Player, or Miss Player, and the treasurer was Mrs. Sampson. So once again, adds a bit of um, background information to your to your relatives, and you find out what they did and what organisations they were involved with. Uh, you, if you wonder whether your um, ancestor was a Freemason or belonged to other lodges such as the um, Independent Order of, of um, Foresters or the Manchester Unity Lodge or the Buffalo Lodge or the Independent Order of Rackabites, uh, you often find out they... The, that through their funeral notice because they all seem to put a funeral notice in. I think actually a lot of them, a lot of these lodges actually pay for funerals. So this tells you that um, Frederick Ellis was a member of the um, Lodge of Judah, which was one of the uh, Freemason lodges. So A and F. Yeah, Freemason lodges. So I mean, it just um, gives you a bit more information about. About, about your family. So my grandfather, he was in the Freemasons and he had a written notice in for his death as well as a family notice, but the funeral, there's also a notice in from the um, the lodge about um, his funeral. So just sort of tells you what they were doing and their affiliations. And church activities. So this is a Cadinia Presbyterian Ladies Guild, which has just been sold. So we won't be seeing those reports again. So it tells you about the... Um, one of their concerts and who was involved in it. Mrs. Christie was president. Mrs. Wen was the secretary. The Reverend Butchers was the minister. And there shows you a list of people who, who um, sung at the concert. So that's a nice way to um, fill in information about not only uh, if your ancestors or your relative is mentioned here, it tells you something about what they did and what church they belonged to, but it's also a bit of local history information as well. And military. So, of course, um, Trove has got uh, one of the things that happened before, so the centenary of the First World War was 2014 to 2018. And so just before that, Trove digitised, or the Sailor of Victoria actually paid to digitise newspapers from every council in Victoria between 1914 and 1918. So you may find that like with the Lang Lang Guardian, the Cure Up Sun, that they are digitised on Trove uh, courtesy of the State Library of Victoria from 1914 to 1918. So, and you find lots of other local papers for that period of time because they did it because they knew that people would be incredibly interested in how the local communities actually um, coped and what they did during the war. And so, um, Packham Gazette as well is the, the Packham Gazette's online as well for the same period, but you're not going to find the Packham Gazette online for any other period apart from during the war period at the moment. So, this just tells you about the um, St. Patrick's Catholic School um, honour roll being unveiled and who was unveiled, who, who was, um, oops, the daisy, who, um, who was actually on the honour board. 
So that's more information about your local community and more information about local families. So you may not even realise that um, your ancestor was on an honour board anywhere. So we have, um, for instance, at Coraline, there's a bloke called Leslie Fritch who is working in the area, but he enlisted at, one, at Warrnambool. His mother lived at Warrnambool, but you'd, you'd, and he was uh, died of disease when during the war but he's on the honor board at Coraline because that's where he was working at the time and that uh, and they decided to put him on the um on the mall memorial so um you know this sort of this sort of information may track may help you track down one of your missing ancestors or may make you realize that oh perhaps they were working in Pakenham during the war even though I know they enlisted in Mildura because that's where they normally lived because people did move around a lot so there's lots of information about uh, military information about when they enlisted, uh, whether when they returned, uh, farewells held for them. Uh, you know, the farewell saying, you know, Sad Private Private Burke was presented with a with a gift at the local hall. Those sorts of things. There's lots and lots of military information from the First World War on Trove because um, of the action that the State Library did to actually get them digitised in time for the anniversary. There's also shipping news. So this is from 1831. This is uh, John Ramsdale, who's my great, 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 something or other grandfather and his six children. And they arrived at Circular Head from Launceston, I think this tells you. So once again, this is just more information about your ancestors that you may not find. There's, uh, and you have to remember too, that of course, in the olden days before 1900, when everyone was a different colony, so there's, uh, there's lots of information about people going from one colony to another. So John Ramsdale and his wife, um, Eliza, Elizabeth, she, they, they often went over to um, the, another colony, Victoria, and they traded with it as well. And because they were two different colonies, they had to, the, the, the newspaper reports at the time often list the, um, for, for customs purposes, uh, what they traded. So they would say, John Ramsdale, six cows sent to Victoria because it was had to go through customs. Well, the same with the borders between New South Wales and Victoria. Everything had to go through customs there. So, um, or else you find that, you know, Eliza Ramsdale, she went off to Melbourne for some reason in 1834 from Tasmania. So shipping lists are, are recorded in the newspapers in great detail and you may well find lots of information about any of your ancestors or your relatives. And it's interesting. So I might tell you, for instance, if you knew that they started off in Tasmania and then went to Victoria, it may be the time they, you may find the date of when they first arrived, or else it may just, you may just build up a picture of the trade that they did between states or how often they went back and forth across, across the, um, from one, one colony to another. So there's lots of information you can sort of glean from shipping records, which help once again, build a picture of the, um, your ancestors' family. Well, now, what else we got here? Oh, yes. Now, if you happen to have um, a convict in the family, not a convict, a, a bad person. So here, this bad person who didn't, who failed to renew their wireless license. This is in 1936. They were reported and shamed in the Dang Nong Journal <laughs> to appear for the Lang Lang Court. And they were, so James Bold, Lawrence Twyford, Dorothy Beck, so all these people didn't read Jean Benham, lots of names there still around the area. They didn't renew their, their radio license and they were fined a pound. And um, so, oops, a daisy. Hang on. Oh gosh, let me get back. Oh gosh. Um, hmm. Sorry. Okay. Right, there we go. Yeah, anyway, so you may find, oh, they may have committed more heinous crimes than that, of course, but, you know, that's, that's the sort of information that you can find. And uh, unidentified bodies. So if you're wondering why, if you're wondering why that you cannot find your ancestor or your great-grandfather and why they suddenly disappeared, there's lots of reports about unidentified bodies. So people, you know, when people didn't carry around a wallet with a license and everything, they had no ID on them. And if they were uh, people who are of a itinerant sort of nature, or itinerant jobs, and they moved from place to place, they may not have been missed, missed, you know, in the locality where they were last, or they may not have had any other relatives in Australia. So this poor man here was found um, 
on the body on, on the road at Upper Beaconsfield in 1917. Healthy man, aged about 50, had lain where it was found for about a fortnight. So he died, they said, of drink and exposure. But look, the sad thing is that he wasn't identified. Um, he, he clearly was someone's son or someone's brother, but no one knows. And there may well have been some mother back in um, England writing to where he was last seen saying, have you seen my son? Perhaps, you know, putting a low notice in the newspaper about, you know, have you seen my son? Or well, he may not ever be missed by anyone. So that's why sometimes you come to a brick wall because and I did, a body has been found, which they cannot identify. The other thing, of course, is that people came from England and they wanted to disappear as well. So, you know, that's just a, a um, sort of example of the sort of family or uh, personal information that you can find in newspapers. Now we go back to... Trove. And we'll look at now how you can interact with Trove. So one of the great things about Trove, in my mind, is that you can um, create lists and you can interact. So you need to log in. So just create an account. It's free to create an account. Um, right. So I've logged in here. You can see up here that I've logged in. Um, so once you're in, you can see how many you can do. So what, you, what the sort of things you can do are, um, are usually connected to the newspapers. So if we go to, um, we'll go to the newspapers again. So we'll look at this article here, Carlo Catani. So what you can do here, you can see down the side, the sort of things you can do. So this first one here, and it's all explained in the handout, is it tells you how to cite the information or gives you the, the article identifier. So if you're doing a thesis or something, you want to know how to cite this, this tells you how to do it. This here is text correction. So if you want to correct the text. So what, what um, all these articles have been machine optical character recognition, OCR. So basically a machine reads them and puts their version of what they read on the left here, which of course doesn't always mean anything because if the print's really hard to read or there's various other reasons why it may not be quite accurate, but um, you can correct the text if you want to. And the, and the reason why you might correct the text is that it means that it improves your search results because when, the, when you're searching Trove, the newspapers, the, the actual, it searches both the uh, original document and also searches the the text here. So the more accurate the text is here, the better your hits are. So I do a lot of text, a uh, um, lot, of, lot of correcting. You just match text, log in. Um, so here's an example. Uh, he lives on to here. So he fell, uh, this one here. Oh, so this is fell CJN. It's actually the word it should be fell on. So we'll just correct that, save and exit. Um, that's an example, but I mean, sometimes it's much worse than that. And a lot of it you can barely read, but it is really worth, if you had the time to do text corrections, um, you can add a tag. So a tag is like, um, just a subject heading. So you add Carla Gatani or you can add war, whatever you like. So people who have, um, a lot of people, um, they tag their family members. So they put like, you know, Weatherhead family or something like that. A tag is something personal. You do it yourself, you can add whatever you like. Uh, I don't do tags, but that's me. Um, lists are um, lots of lists. So I put down a list I call Kyneton, um, even though I've got a lot. I will show you lists in a minute. But the reason why you might create a list is that it just means that you don't have to um, do the search again. So you're doing a search and you come up with five great articles on whatever subject you want. If you create a list, then it means it keeps all your articles together. You don't have to keep the list, but we'll just go to list, add. So we'll just go um, add a list and we'll call it, I don't know, anything, we'll call it color. Color, we'll call it color, Jeff. So, um, and then once you've got it, you can then either um, 
make it a private list or a collaborative list. So if you and your if you and your cousin are both working on the family and you both want to make the same list up, well, you can make it a collaborative list. That means you can do your own searching on Trove, add it to the list. Your cousin can do your own searching on Trove, add it to the list. And then you can make a comment about what's, what, what the article contains or whatever you like and then save it. So we've added this to a list I've called Carlo, Carlo Death and call it what you like. So I, I can't, I, 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 as I said, I do lots of lists because it just keep, means that instead of searching and searching again for the article you wanted, it's in one of your lists. Uh, this here is a um, note. So a note is something you can add. Um, and there, um, so you might add a note to say, um, if you see a photograph of a family, you might add a note to say, oh, this is my auntie Joan Smith and she was Miss Brown before she married or something like that. So notes are public. Anyone can see the note. But, you know, it, it, it's just a, a note that you add for either um, the benefit of the wider public because you have more information about the article, more information about the photo, or a personal note because you just feel that, you know, you just want to add a note to help you remember why you chose that article in the first place. So you can make your note private or public. You can uh, go down to here. You can download it. So you can download the article as a um, as text, as a PDF, or as an image. Uh, you can also buy it if you want to. And um, there's various other things here, but we run out of time as usual. So I'm just going to go back and show you um, lists. I'll go show you text corrections first. So, so one of the things about Trove, uh, this is competitive text correcting. So you can tell you that I've corrected 85,997 lines and I'm number 685 out of 67,000 volunteers. So I've done more text correcting than 60,000 people, but the, the, um, the, the top text correctors are in the like millions and millions. So they're actually uh, way ahead of me, but it's sort of a uh, bit sort of funny. Um, and I, what, it was one of my ambitions was to get below, to get into the top 1,000 text correctors, and I did eventually make it. So um, as I said, I, I correct text because I use Trove as a research for lots of stories that I'm writing, and I just find it's better. So I just go through, correct the text, gives you an idea of what's in the article and what you want to use to quotes and things like that. And in so I use it for my own benefit, but it really is good for the for other Trove users if you can correct the text because it does... Um, make it, um, it gives you more accurate results and that's good for everyone. So lists. Um, so these are my lists. So I do hundreds of lists. So I, when I was local history librarian, I wrote an article about native cats or quolls in Case Gardenia. And I made a list up for that reason because I wanted to, um, oh, I just want to keep all my, info, all my research together. So that's a public list. That's a private list. This is one I've made of 46 items and 934 flood. For some reason, I made it a private list. So only I can see that, uh, this research I'm doing at the moment. So these are various lists that I've made up of. And sometimes here, so this is Alma Road School at Jim Brooks. I've only got three items in it. I made it over a year ago. And I just decided to make that list up, but sometimes I go through and delete them. So that's the whole thing. You see, you make a list up and then you can make a decision that you just want to delete them but at, but at later on. But you've just kept all your searches together at the time that you want them. And that's the benefit of making a list. So I've got hundreds of them and they're just, I'll show you, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, so this is the list I made. So you can put a little description and I wrote, the reason I wrote it. And then it goes through, the list here and then um, I've, I've made it in put it into um, chronological order and then um, information about why I kept the article so that's a little note here that I made to myself here so um, so that's what the list is so people who have made tags so a lot of articles is a family notice of course so um, that's that's an example of tagging here so someone's tagged this for David Street Carlton Clearly, it seems like they're probably tracing the history of that property. Uh, this is a list of um, a tag of Rutherford, which was obviously a property name. So they're tracing the history of the property more than likely. Um, and these, once again, are different lists. So you can make, see, this is a, a tag quite 
quite this one here, Mr. and Mrs. Fitzpatrick of Barron Gap East, quite a detailed tag, and others are just first names and everything like that. So it's up to you. Tags are just a personal thing. And this, once again, is another way of keeping your information together without putting into a list. I prefer a list. Some people prefer a tag. So that's what the article looks like. So if we just click on um, here, then you go, you click on the, uh, that's what it looks like when you click on the article. So that's the actual article. And then we go back and that's its entry in the list in the list here. So that's almost the end, four minutes to go. So uh, what else can you find on Trove? So you can also find, um, sorry, we're, um, the Government Gazette. So that's on Trove. Like the Victorian Government Gazette, that was in my handout a few weeks ago, is actually not on Trove, but the New South Wales and Commonwealth Government Gazette so on Trove. And a Government Gazette is, a, is the official government information uh, so if your ancestor had a, uh, was it cemetery trustee or got a government contract or any of those sort of things, they're all published in the Gazette. So you can often find information about your ancestors through these government Gazettes. So, but they're not all on Trove. As I said, the Victorian ones aren't on Trove. The New South Wales ones are. Um, lots of images are on Trove. Uh, people and organisations um, Um, oh, for color. So I'm just looking here for people and organisations, and that directs you to um, various uh, biographical. You, you may not find anything there, but you might just to um, various biographical sources. So um, I, I still, I personally feel that the best thing about Trove are the newspapers, but um, that's my opinion. So um, the newspapers and the ability to create lists is the things I love about Trove. So we'll finish this off by saying Trove is so much fun and it's a great source of family and local history information.